we need you to step into someone else's shoes for a minute. Someone who's probably very different than you. Someone who's not able to get a job. And it's not because of COVID or the economy, but it's because almost every single employer out there thinks you can't work. Imagine that. Almost every employer thinks you can't work. But the truth is, you can work and you want to work. And society, it's all the better when you do work. You have a disability. And your disability affects how you learn and sometimes the ability to be in the world like everyone else. And your disability, it has a name, like Asperger's syndrome, autism, or Down syndrome. As a person with an intellectual and developmental disability, let's just call it IDD for short, your whole life from birth to age 21 has been like climbing Mount Everest, literally, like Mount Everest hard, but you've done it and you've worked really hard, probably a lot harder than your typical friends. You had reading help and math help, your homework took longer, you received speech therapy and occupational therapy, and then after working so hard, you finally arrive at your high school or college graduation. You have 100% earned it. You're excited, you're ready. But then, when you go to take that next step forward, you can't move. There's no path, there's no world waiting for you. And as you stand there stuck, you watch all your typical friends move on to their next adventure, their adult lives where they get to work, be independent, live a purposeful life. The name of this place where you're stuck, it's called the cliff, and it's really easy to ignore the people standing there. Noelle and I, we couldn't ignore the people on the cliff because our daughters, Meg and Kate, they were there. But we knew they didn't belong there. Both Meg and Kate have an intellectual disability. They have taught us firsthand that they're more than capable of working that they want to work, and that they should work. They've opened our eyes to the reality that most adults with an intellectual disability face when they're done with school. And that reality is an unemployment rate of over 80%. 80% is an awful statistic. So two years ago, when Meg and Kate were around 21, we opened a coffee cafe called Beans and Company. It's a for-profit business with a mission to have a fully inclusive staff. And what we mean by that is we hire adults both with and without intellectual disabilities. It's a 50-50 employment model. Doing it this way was a very conscious decision on our end because, well, it's how we've raised our daughters and it's how we live with inclusion. We wanted to create a business where everyone belongs. My husband and I have owned a gourmet to go and catering company for over 25 years and working together every day, you may be wondering, yes, we're still married. <laughs> Our daughters, Megan and Molly, they grew up in the family business working alongside each other and our staff. Our employees treat Megan just like everyone else. To them, she's just Meg. And our customers, well, they're kinder, more patient and definitely more engaged when Meg gets to wait on them. And then there's the humor factor, and well, you're just gonna have to trust me on this one because it's Meg. Patience, acceptance, and humor, three things I think we need a lot more of. Noelle and I not only share in the bond of being mothers of daughters with Down syndrome, the laugh and the pull out your hair moments because boy, we have had our fair share. But we also share in the fear of what reality is for adults with an intellectual disability. They face a society that perceives them as not being able to work. Employers fear hiring them as too hard or too expensive or just too much of a burden. If we're being optimistic, we could say, employers underestimate the strengths, the skills, and the talents of someone with IDD. But if we're being realistic, the truth is they probably don't see them at all. but we see them. So we started talking and planning and strategizing and soon Beans and Company was born and we were up and running with our 50-50 inclusive staff. What we learned in the last two years since we opened Beans 
It's more than we can possibly share in our minutes with you today. But the most important thing we want you to know is that people with IDD, they absolutely can work and they want to work. And when they do work, their lives are better, businesses are better, and society is all the better for it. So Kim and I, we thought we had it all together when we opened Beans. We did our research. Kim had over 25 years of experience in the food industry. I had, well, great passion, the willingness to, you know, learn to make a latte. As Kim would say, I'm still kind of learning. <laughs> and equally important, we had the support of the community. So when Nick, one of our original employees with IDD, said to us at the end of his first shift, I can't wait to go home and go to bed, Kim and I looked at each other, crushed, thinking, oh my gosh, we totally failed. He hates working here. And then Nick went on to say, I can't wait to go home and go to bed so I get to wake up and come to work at Beans tomorrow, a mantra he still has today. Nick is perfect in his position at Beans. He's a total front-of-the-house kind of guy, social, huge smile, people skills any of us would envy. He can run the register and take orders better than anyone. So besides having an employee who is excellent at his job, we have an employee who can't wait to go to bed so that he gets to wake up and come to work. We know people with IDD can work, and in the right position, just like anyone else, they can be extraordinary employees. Duncan, another employee at Beans, he naturally excelled at the role of expediter, which as a newbie in the restaurant world means the conduit between the front of the house and the back of the house. He's meticulous, gets every order exactly right, out quickly, checks on customers, takes full ownership of the cafe. Our hearts could explode with pride. And it's not just for Nick and Duncan, it's for every one of our employees at Beans, disability or no disability. The change that Kim and I didn't see coming was a change among our customers. By having an inclusive workplace, a place where everyone belongs, no one has to check anything at the door. Employees, customers alike, everyone, they can just be themselves. And these conversations and connections that wouldn't have otherwise happened, they just do. This can happen to your company too by fostering a real and inclusive culture that people want to be a part of, starts by hiring just one person with IDD. And this will ignite a positive chain reaction with your clients, your customers, and your community. Minson Hoke, an advertising agency, hired a young woman with IDD as an office assistant. They treated this young woman just like they treated all of their employees. They had business cards made for her, she had her own office space, and they included her in their press release of new hires. After seeing the press release, one of the clients of the ad agency sent this young woman a box of their company sw swag along with a welcome note, unsolicited goodwill from a client. These are just examples of what happens when you give someone with IDD an opportunity, just like you would anyone else. When you make a conscious decision, to do what's right for a group of people that have been overlooked by society for far too long. But inclusive employment doesn't just belong at a coffee shop or a cafe or a grocery store. It belongs everywhere. There are so many jobs people with IDD can do, so many opportunities they should have. We just need to think differently. We need to think creatively. Take Dr. Jennifer Penoyer, a dermatologist in the Hartford, Connecticut area with a large volume practice. Her medical assistants were becoming overwhelmed with increased responsibilities, telling her they barely had time to get patients to their rooms. Over the years, Dr. Penoyer had talked to her friends and her patients about some of their children with IDD who were struggling to find work when they were done with school. Dr. Penoyer, she thought creatively. She created a position in her practice where an employee would greet, transport, and provide instruction to a patient. After some networking, Danny, a young man with IDD, was hired. On his first day of work, though, he did express concern that he wouldn't be able to reach the flag on the door signaling a patient was ready. Dr. Penoyer thought for a moment, grabbed a ruler, handed it to Danny so he could push the flag up. A perceived barrier 
was easily solved. And now the clipboard that Danny carries when he's transporting patients has a ruler conveniently tucked underneath the top clip. Earlier this year, Danny celebrated his five-year work anniversary with Dr. Penoyer, and she says hiring him has fostered a sense of community among her employees, a dynamic that did not exist before. Steve Colgan, a scientist at Pfizer for over 30 years, he thought creatively too. He recognized some of the duties assigned to the lab staff require exquisite attention to detail, but often can be drudgery for typical scientists. Steve thought, what if some of these tasks, what some might call repetitive or boring, could be taken on by a group of people who thrive doing that type of work? Steve knew a community of people who could do the jobs the other scientists disliked. He also knew this group of people often aren't even considered for jobs. This group of people, people with intellectual disabilities, they're part of Steve's everyday life. Steve has a son with autism and a brother with an intellectual disability. So Steve presented his idea of an inclusive employment program to a management team at Pfizer, who ultimately supported the pilot program and wanted to see it succeed. Steve and his colleagues got together, they defined a set of lab-based tasks that would be ideal for someone with IDD, and they worked with the nonprofit Best Buddies to help them identify and hire candidates and provide job support. Soon, the program was up and running. Hiring someone with IDD, it can require some support, but the benefits can far outweigh any obstacles. Steve reported seeing these employees take ownership of their work, pride at their role at Pfizer. Other scientists reported having time for more creative tasks. Morale among everyone was better. And the program, it helped fulfill Pfizer's commitment to diversity and inclusion within their company. What if every business just thought a little bit more creatively, like Dr. Jennifer Penoyer or Steve Colgan at Pfizer? Don't get us wrong, some companies are doing it. Ryan, he's a busser at Davio's Northern Italian Steakhouse in Boston. Elena, she works at Amazon in their packaging department. She's got a busy month ahead. <laughs> Sarah, she works for 20th Century Fox as an admin assistant. And Lily works for Hyatt Hotels in their housekeeping department. Tim, he works for Bank of America doing tech support. Jose works for Nike as a retail associate. And Mike, he works for the Boston Red Sox doing building maintenance. Each of these employees I've just mentioned has IDD. So as you can see, creative employment opportunities for people with intellectual disabilities transcend business, business size, industry, location, and skills. Remember that cliff you were standing on at the beginning of this talk? Now just picture looking up and seeing one person after another stepping into a job and into an independent life. People with intellectual disabilities can work and want to work. Just like everyone else, they want the independence, the pride, the sense of belonging, and the social engagement that comes with having a job. The bottom line, when someone with IDD is put in a position that's right for them, they benefit. The business benefits and society benefits. The individual's life becomes more enriched as they become confident, independent, and valued. The business benefits by having more engaged employees, by cultivating a loyal customer base, and by building a stronger connection to their community Society gains by having all people contribute to the best of their ability. Quite simply, hiring someone with an intellectual disability makes the world work better. The reason the unemployment rate is over 80% for people with intellectual disabilities? It's because of us. Society has been the barrier to their employment. It's time for each and every one of us to think differently, think creatively, and solve this unemployment problem for this community. In the end, we all benefit. The person, business, society. We're doing it. Others are doing it. Why aren't you? Thank, Thank you. you.